Hello scholars, here I am with our video 3 of chapter 7, Human Body, Skeletal and Muscular System. Scholars, we are learning about the skeleton, okay, and its different parts, fine. So, in this video, we are going to learn about one more part of our skeletal system. Let's see which one is that. Here it is a picture of human skeleton. Fine. So scholars, we know that the framework of bones is the skeleton. Now these bones are hard, rigid and they are not flexible. Okay. But then too, we can move, walk and even dance. So how is it possible? If bones are hard, they are rigid, then how we can able to move them? What makes them to move? Joint, yes, it is the joints due to which we can able to move. Now, what is a joint? The point where two bones meet is called a joint. These joints, they perform two main functions in our body. They hold the bones together to form the skeleton and they allow the skeleton to move. Otherwise, what would have been happen? We won't be able to move anything, okay, in our body. So, it is the joints which allow the skeleton to move. Now, these joints, basically, they are of two types. There are immovable, means the joints which do not move, okay. The joints which are present in the skull, okay, they are immovable. So, there are immovable and movable joints present in our body. Let's learn more about the movable joints. There are many different kinds of movable joints that allow different kinds of movements. The first one is ball and socket joint. We all know ball, okay? And what is the socket? Yes. Socket means any place in which we can fix, is it? So, if we see the ball and socket joint, okay, one bone has a ball-like round structure and that bone can be fixed into the cavity of another bone. So, hence it is called as the ball and socket joint. Ball and socket joints are found mostly in the hip and shoulder. They allow maximum movement and hence we can able to swing our arms and legs in many directions. So ball and socket joints, they allow maximum movements. In the picture, you can see the position of ball and socket joint in the shoulder and in the hip region. Second one is the gliding joint. This is found in the bones of wrist and the ankles. <clears throat> Movement happens when the surfaces of two flat bones glide by sliding over each other. Okay, so here these are the gliding joints. And these bones, they slide or glide over each other. And then makes it to move. Third one is the hinge joint. Scholars, in this picture, you can see there is a hinge. And that hinge helps us to open and close the door. Yes, door, windows, boxes. Okay, we can able to open it and close it due to this hinge. Okay, same like that. Okay. There is hinge joint present in our body. Now these hinge joints are found mainly in the knee and elbow. Just move your elbow, okay? You can see it is just doing the action like the hinge, is it? So this movement of this joint is very similar to the hinge joint. So the movement of this hinge joint is similar to Hinged door. Fourth one is the pivot joint. 
This joint is found in the neck and allows movement of head from side to side. Just move your head. You can move it up and down, side to side. Yes, and due to pivot joint which is found in the neck, we can able to move it. Now, the last one is the saddle joint. Saddle joint are found only in the thumbs. They allow a back and forth rocking movement as well as side to side movement of the thumbs. Now, this joint has a very limited rotation. So, scholars, these are the main joints which are present in our body and due to these joints, fine, there are different kinds of movements, okay, which takes place in our body. So, that's it for this video. After watching the video, what you are going to do? You are going to move, okay, the respective body parts and just see how one joint movement is different from the another one. And then, read page number 71 and 72. Okay, scholars, we will meet again in the next video. Till then, bye-bye and take care.